Welcome back to Smart Art History. This week we cover Picasso, Cubism, and the Nazis bombing Spain. So before we dive into the painting, let's take a quick look at the man behind it all. Pablo Picasso was the most dominant and influential artist of the first half of the 20th century. Associated most with being one of the pioneers of Cubism, he also invented collage and made major contributions to symbolism and surrealism. This is an important point that we take into consideration when analyzing any of his works. Unlike Magritte, who we discussed last week, Picasso saw himself above all else as a painter. That being said, his sculpture was greatly influential, and he also explored areas as diverse as printmaking and ceramics. Finally, he was a famously charismatic personality. His many relationships with women not only filtered into his art, but also may have directed its course, and his behaviors has come to embody that of the bohemian modern artist. Though what is primarily perplexing about Picasso's body of work to most people outside of the art world is why is he so famous? What was it about Picasso's work that makes people all around the world feel so moved? Why do professional art critics continue to insist on his status as an influential artist, even though most people seem to think his work is reminiscent of a five-year-old's wall drawing after they found the crayons you hid away. Well, it comes back to what we said earlier. He made major contributions to symbolism and surrealism. Above all else, these two points are most important when viewing any of Picasso's paintings. We touched a little on surrealism last week, and we'll go into more detail in the near future, but for now, just remember that surrealism is intentionally abstract. It was a counter-movement to realism, and many artists used it as a tool to get you to better understand the emotion of a scene without getting bogged down by the actual things within in the scene itself. That being said, let's move into Picasso's amazing use of symbolism. It may seem an odd combination at first to place specific items within a scene to help portray a message, when at the same time you want people to avoid focusing on any specific object within it. Though, Picasso was a master at threading that line, and his work within Cubism was a definite reason as to why. In Cubist artwork, objects are analyzed, broken up, and reassembled in an abstract form. This allows Picasso the ability to use use a surrealist view to emphasize the emotion of painting first and foremost, while still having people be able to recognize and analyze the scene and what is meant by it. Now, with all that being said, let's take a look at one of my personal favorites and one of Picasso's most notable works, Guernica. Though it may look chaotic and difficult to decipher at first, Guernica is actually a moving piece of art that tells a powerful story about the Spanish Civil War. The two most striking features of the painting when you first see it are, first, its size, and second, the use of color, or rather, lack thereof. Guernica is almost a full mural stretching over 25 and a half feet long and standing over 11 and a half feet high. This aids its depiction of suffering caused by war because of its ability to tower over you and engulf your whole field of vision. Its unique use of monochromatic scale, specifically that of black and white, also helps to further convey the anti-war message. Though, before we dive into the symbolism behind the painting, let's first take a look at the historical context surrounding it. On April 26, 1937, the Spanish Nationalist government had its allies, Nazi Germany, bomb Guernica, a town in northern Spain. The number of victims of the attack are still disputed, though is estimated to be as high as 1,600 people killed. There were also claims that the city was vacant of all eligible fighters, as they'd already signed up to fight at the front lines of the Spanish Civil War. And so, the bombing was committed against primarily women and children and the elderly. Picasso was commissioned by the Spanish Republican government to create a large mural for the Spanish display at the 1937 World's Fair in Paris. His initial sketches for the project were somewhat dispassionate. However, shortly after reading an eyewitness account of the bombing, Picasso was moved to shift his subject after 35 days of work, he had finished his painting. Now, let's walk through the mural one piece at a time and take a look at Picasso's use of symbolism as it pertained to his anti-war message. First, off to the far left, we see a bull depicted with a dark body and a white head. The expression it wears is one of shock, most likely caused by the horrors surrounding him. Picasso himself had said that the animal was placed there to further signify the brutality and darkness. Underneath the image of the bull sits a woman clutching a dead child. Her head facing the sky in anguish, she cries out, her eyes in the shape of tears. This image was meant to resemble the classic Catholic image of the virgin and child, albeit tainted by war. Working away further down still, we see a dead soldier on the ground. The soldier, however, does not have a complete body, but rather a series of distant jointed parts strewn about the floor. We can see his head and both his arms, and in one arm he carries a broken sword, in the other he carries a flower. This is an important point that 
we'll come back to soon. Above it all is a light bulb. The symbolism of this particular item is somewhat debated among scholars, but it is widely believed to have multiple meanings. First, it is intentionally shaped like an eye and its positioning at the top of the painting leads many to believe that it's God's eye as he overlooks the madness and destruction caused by war. It is also believed to be a symbol of technological advancement, as it is placed immediately next to an oil lamp. This comparison is particularly striking, as a large part of the reason that Nazi Germany and Italy both agreed to bomb Guernica was for a chance to test out their newly created equipment in a live setting. Finally, if you learned Spanish in Spain, you would find that the word for bulb, bombilla, is very similar to the word for bomb, bomba, which would also go towards explaining its position at the top of the painting. Situated at the center of it all, we find a horse appearing as though it's about to collapse and in some way wounded. We can only make out the horse's head as it gazes out into the horrors of war. The rest of its body is overlapped by other images, which in turn form more images such as a human skull. Down now to the bottom right corner where we see a woman with an injured leg. She is bleeding bleeding from the knee and trying to stop the bleeding with her hand. Above her, we see a man pleading to the sky, perhaps to God, perhaps to the German planes. As he does so, the building continues to burn and crumble around him. It has come to be a powerful artistic representation of the anti-war feeling given across the mural. Finally, we come to a woman with an oil lamp, her face appearing to be one of shock and bewilderment. She has been considered the ghostly representation of the Spanish Republic. Taking all these elements into account, it is simple to see the anti-war message that was clear Clearly intended by the artist. As your eye flows through the painting, the destruction, death, mutilation, and suffering are very clear. Though, Picasso, whether intentionally or not, included one more element into his painting. Much like the bottom of Pandora's box, if we look deep enough into this mural, we can find hope. Let's take a look at three small elements somewhat hidden in all of the commotion. The first was the flower at the dead soldier's hand. It is an odd choice to place there, as soldiers are not known for carrying bouquets into battle. And also, considering the broken sword and the soldiers at their hand, the simple little flower sends a clear message of peace to come. Though it is not very discernible, the flower in the soldier's hand resembles a white poppy flower. Ever since the end of World War I, poppies have traditionally symbolized peace and the end in remembrance of war. The second was a small bird between the bull and the horse. It is not a very clear symbol as it appears to be just a flash of white, though in the Catholic Church, the Holy Spirit is often represented as a white dove. This leads many to believe that the bird is a symbol for the Holy Spirit, beginning to break past the darkness of the events around it, and once again usher in the peace to the near future. Finally, we have the oil lamp. If studied carefully, you will see that the source of light that is lighting the scene is not the electric light bulb above, but the oil lamp immediately beside it. This small flame is strong enough to shed light upon the entire scene, and if it is in fact the spirit of the Spanish Republic wielding it, then it is the source of hope for those in the scene itself. This would explain why the injured woman below looks up longingly toward the lamp's light. Hopefully that helped shed a little light onto not just who Picasso was as an artist, but how his incredibly effective use of symbolism put him into the limelight as one of the 20th century's most influential artists. Thanks for watching Smart Art History, and if you'd like to see more Smart Art History, check out our Smart Art History playlist, or just click on the link in the description below. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover on Smart Art History, or have any questions about this week's lesson, feel free to leave them in the comments below and we'll get you the answers you're looking for. The thing you see, but always hiding just directly behind the thing that is in front of us. The issue with this is that you can never really remove the obstruction entirely, because the issue is not with the object, but within the thought and language itself. Which brings us back to the treachery of images. At first glance, the image seems quite simple in its message. It's a pipe. Though what is a bit odd is that below the pipe is a message written directly to the viewer. This is not a pipe. So, if this isn't a pipe, what is it?